Yo, what's up guys? Fireheart318 here with another episode of KSP Air Race. This time, I'm flying at, uh, what is this? Dundards. Race at Dundards. And this first craft is one of my own design. The Splicer 14 Compound Variant. Now, if you look at the back of the wings, you'll see something kinda odd. There are six control surfaces per wing, instead of the usual two to four. Uh, no, one to two. Sorry about that. And this is because the reaction time on the big S elevons, at least I think that's what they are, the space shuttle ones, it's really slow and it causes some weird issues while pulling up and rolling at the same time. So I wanted to see what happens with this, and that issue seems to be more or less gone. And we are well over the speed of sound already. This race is, well, a mix of flat out and a bit of maneuverability. We're in the more or less flat out part, coming up to a slalom slash chicane slash whatever you want to call it. Now, I've reprogrammed, the uh, promed? Programmed my keyboard. It now has none of the, uh, like, pretty light effects, and it's just an instrument panel more or less. It'll hopefully let me have a better idea of what's going on, and let me keep my eyes on the, uh, what would this even be? Whatever, the track, I guess. And approaching 500 meters a second, a lot of that speed is going to be killed off here, and I am not good at flying this plane yet. Still used to the other variant, and the Kugelblitz, which may or may not be coming up. I wasn't really able to find any craft in time for this video, so they're all vehicles of my own design. Notice how I said vehicles there? Maybe, uh, what's it called? Maybe the next air race at KSC could involve some, I don't know, uh, Kerbal Foundry's hovercraft or something. Anyway, I think I'm getting the feel for this, and where is the next checkpoint? Uh, yep, where I thought it is. It's just across this bridge. With a hovercraft, maybe even here, you could jump across these sections of what are probably destroyed bridge instead of using that bridge. I don't know, it, like, just food for thought or something, I guess. Now, this is a fairly straightforward section. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to put so many cones here, but yeah, I guess there are. Now, you'll notice it's no longer Valentina Kerman in the pilot seat. Instead, it's Jab and Bill who are having an amazing time, and crapping their space suit. Anyway, that's because I restarted the save, so I could have the Scott Manley air race in here. Now, you probably didn't see it, but it's there, trust me. And during rehearsal, or not really rehearsal, but just uh, getting into the groove, I guess, practice, that's the word I'm looking for, I could not fly this thing, at least in its standard variant, around the air race, Scott Manley's air race, sorry, without crashing within the first five checkpoints. It's easily the most technical uh, air race of the four in this series, and that's one of the reasons I'm saving it for last. And, hmm. yeah, this is another fairly straightforward segment. Uh, segment. I'm gonna start diving down a little to hopefully gain a little more speed. Not sure if that'll play out in my favor. And I do not remember what's on the other side of this mountain. I'm betting it's a turn. Yeah, I really like this plane. It's, well, the 14th splicer I've built. And... Probably gonna have to turn here. Other way. Okay. That's really gonna hurt my time, but... Ooh, I wasn't even over it. That's a restart. Let's at least see how quickly I make it here. That's a 340, but it doesn't count. And that was really close. Just gonna go ahead and restart and see you there. And we're back, and this thing is about to fall over because, I don't know, it likes to dance or something. I should really turn the RCS on. Okay. 
Really, I don't know what's up with the landing gear, but this plane just wants to dance. It's the only one that's like that. I really don't know. But what I do know is I need to pull up a little. So this is probably the most technical part in the early stage. I'm gonna try and like do a knife flight on my side to lose altitude without needing to use my control surfaces and lose speed. Though what I will do is uh, try to keep an eye on the sky while doing this. I'm gonna increase all the, uh, what's it called, all the rear control surfaces, well, rear most control surfaces to 150% to hopefully improve maneuverability, because as you saw in the last section, as, like, assuming I left it in there, is, well, it's not the most maneuverable splicer, and it needs all the help it can get in that category. Or maybe it doesn't for this particular race, but... A lot of them it does. Now, the Splicers are easily my favorite aircraft in all of gaming. And I know that's a, it sounds a little full of myself, and frankly, I kinda am. Well, in this case at least. But the Splicers are just amazing, in my opinion. They're so maneuverable and fast, although they aren't efficient, no, bleh, aren't efficient at all. I'm running a full fuel tank, and I've already used, like, uh, almost, almost 300 liters of it. I think if I really pushed it, I could get it up to 4 liters a second, which is a lot. Units, liters, same thing here. Approaching the gap checkpoint. I really wonder how this would work in a hovercraft, but I'm not going to have time to test it, because it's, uh, whoa, 944 already. I'm gonna try and record up till 10.30, but I'm not sure how well that'll work. But yeah, if I could get it up to speed, I could easily nail that jump with the ramp farthest to the side. Yeah, I think increasing the sensitivity on the control surfaces was a good idea. This is a hard turn, but thankfully it's something splicers excel at, usually hard 15 plus G turn at 600 meters a second, approaching the next sharp-ish turn. The second sharpest one on the circuit, save for the one we just went through. I don't know what it is with this section. And I should really just explore this part of curve and it looks great for a base. Or just a general messing around. This area, like, I don't know what it is about it. Just great for so many things, like battles and stuff. Might have to try that one day. What do you think? So this is the last real turn. So it's more or less flat out for here, and through here. Uh, so these engines get more power when low to the ground, or low to the sea, and, well, full blast. And moving really quick which are all things we want here. Now, the nose is a shielding docking port. A shielding? Shielded docking port. And I'm not sure if I've pointed this out before, but it doubles... No, it works as both a nose cone and a heat shield, providing more or less the same benefits as both would, but, like, not as much. But there aren't the downsides as dramatically either. Like, it's still relatively aerodynamic, and it still protects against heat well, which is great for the speeds this thing can get up to. Whoa, that was close. So, yeah, that's the Splicer 14. On to whatever the next one is. I think I'll import one of the Ahamkaras or something. See you there.
and I'm back. This time, I'm in the inverse... <sighs> Gotta turn the intakes back on. There. This time, I'm in the inverse 1.5. It's, well, a somewhat strange looking craft with forward swept wings and then backward swept wings. It actually kind of reminds me of a chicken wing. Or thigh, or I'm not actually sure. Um, the part that looks weird. Anyway, starting the- Whoa! What the hell? Whoa, cameraman had a seizure. Okay, let's go back to the start. I have no clue what just happened there. Just, what? T R Z space. The intakes again. Next time I trash, I'm gonna go back to the SPH and fix that. Oh, and it's good to know the runway's right here. I feel like I should turn off roll control on the engine, but then again I feel like that's where all my roll control is coming from, even though it's not. So, I'm gonna take this more carefully this time! Jeez! Oh yeah, that's another feature of the Leopard. I mean, the inverse. It can eject. My backspace key is still flashing. Okay, there. Well, at least we know it's survivable. You know what? I'm not gonna get anywhere with this plane. The count was one thing. This is a whole nother ball game. See you when I find something else. And I'm back. This time, I'm flying the Leopard 1, which should definitely be more controllable and probably more powerful. I had the foresight to reopen the intakes, oh, and I reopened them on the inverse as well, before I left the SPH this time. And yeah, it definitely feels more controllable. It's actually kinda similar to the inverse, but not really. Like, it's got. I don't know what it is, it just looks similar somehow to me. And whoa! Holy balls! How did you survive that job? I'm telling you, something's up with this install of the game, or one of the mods, or something that messes with the aerodynamics. Also, that's interesting. Well, that was interesting. That's interesting. Back again with the Leopard. Hopefully, this will go better. I might have to make some modifications to it just to make it a little easier to fly here. It might be because the time step is faster now that I think about it. But yeah, bailing out there definitely saved me. Hmm. I wonder if one of my mods has changed the weight on the Panther engine, or just jets in general. It would be weird, but... It could help explain this unexplained anomaly. Holy balls, again. Planes are unflyable today. Yeah, that parachute was only there to slow down the plane anyway. Well, the back of the plane. That way it didn't hit me. Which worked. If only the rest of the plane would work like that. So, uh, I came back to the VAB to check it out, um, SPH, to check it out, and, yeah, everything looks exactly how it did on my Mac. Uh, there's no monopropellant in there or anything. Yeah, it's just all the same, which is really, really, really confusing. I just don't understand why this is happening. I know that lack of, uh, what's it called? Uh, your stability, like this, is causing it to, well, do this, but I 
don't understand why it's happening here and not on my Mac. If anyone has any clue why this is happening at any, like, at, at all, it would really help. Also, this is the Elevon I was referring to on the splicer, and that actually kind of looks at home there. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to try this. Big S. And I'm back. I have absolutely no clue how this is going to work, but it's probably going to go terribly. At least there will be a little more drag on the back to help keep it aligned, but that's about it. I did retract the landing gear. Except the G is green still for ground, not blue for sky. Whatever, doesn't really matter. Okay, it's definitely slightly more controllable. Except for roll, that's too controllable. Okay. I mean, I've gotten farther than I had before, so, uh, yeah, I guess. It, it's at least controllable now, even if it looks terribly, terribly ugly. We can still break the sound barrier relatively easily, though, so that's always a good thing. And I'm starting to lose, uh, yaw control. Put it back there. Why do you even do that in the first place, plane? I mean, I know we're the pilots, but you'd think that the Kerbal, in this case Jeb, would automatically correct for the yaw issue. Just cause, well, you know how to fly a plane, Jeb. So, I'm just gonna hold this attitude, it's not exactly worth, uh, what's it called, leveling out at that point. And it still feels rather twitchy, but... At least it's not automatic, the auto kamikaze mode anymore. Yeah, I actually quite like this. I'm frankly shocked that this worked. I hadn't flown it before it spawned in like that. So, yeah, I. Yeah. It works, shockingly. That was the most pathetic burp ever. <laughs> I'm a little too high for this. I mean, it counts as long as I pass over the checkpoint and not off to the side. But still, I like to be low to the ground, so it's easier to tell. Now, the Kugel Blitz, the plane I was going to fly first instead of the Splicer, had, uh, what's it called? It had a nose kind of similar to this. If you've seen my, uh, whoa! Eh. If you've seen my Blade Fighter Mark 1 video, then you'll understand what I'm talking about, but it basically had the, what's going on with the camera? Okay. It basically had the tail adapter A nose with advanced canards off to the side, like, uh, this. And I missed the explosion. Eh. Good enough. It, well, it was that with a panther engine on the bottom, and it was like, really, really fast because it was so damn light, but it was also so damn twitchy, which was impossible to fly. And also, like, automatically rolling and not rolling in the direction I wanted it to, so, yeah, it was just generally an uncompliant bastard. <laughs> See you in a sec. Non-compliant bastard. And that was a little harsh anyway. This is the Ahamkara 1. Or, no, Ahamkara 2, and it is loud as balls. Can you see the volume meter, by the way, on the upper left? I'm just gonna try and talk as loud as I can without hurting my voice or waking the neighbors because it's freaking 10-11 already. But, wow, this thing is fast. The Ahamkara 1 is, well, a plane, obviously. It's got three engines, all from the Airplane Plus mod, and damn, these engines are loud. I need to increase the roll control as well. That would definitely help, I think. Yeah, I can't exactly control this, but 
it would probably be too hard to control it off the launch as well. Anyway, just gonna continue. Uh, really, I forgot your name already, but it would really be great if you could turn the volume on these engines down. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm talking too loud, because this is actually the first time I've done a video with these engines, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure if the game actually cares, or recording software actually cares, and ow, my neck. But I might as well talk loud if it's gonna be, well, if my voice is gonna be drowned out, and I can just adjust it in the audio later if it isn't. So, yeah, rounding the checkpoint and about to cross under this bridge. Despite its twitchiness and weirdness in general, it's actually quite an enjoyable plane to fly. Now, an Ankara is a wish dragon from the video game Destiny, and the trailer and gameplay reveal for Destiny 2 was just released on, I believe it was Thursday, well, uh, May 18th. It's a Thursday. I'm not sure when this video is going up. Hopefully soon, because I haven't uploaded in quite a while, and I've been kicking myself for that for quite a while. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, and I really wish that in Destiny 2, the subclass perks would not be bucket perks, aka preset. You should be able to choose what they are, in other words, not be locked into one of two specific setups. I mean, why even have two, and why even have four perks per setup if you can't change them? And are the wings gonna fly off? No. Good. So yeah, as I was saying, these engines and the cockpit are from the, uh, the, the Airplane Plus mod, and everything else is stock, so yeah, it's just pretty fun. I'm not sure if you saw the video, but it was like the Forgotten Planes or Undocumented Planes or something. I believe it was the first one. It, uh, what's it called? It had a little platform for the tail, it was sort of like the cruciform tail or whatever it's called, but not really. This kinda incorporates that style, and it wouldn't really be useful in real life, but KSP doesn't exactly take wing occlusion into account, so yeah, I guess it's okay. I'm not sure why the air effects seem to be so prominent on the right side of the fuselage, but not the left. And I almost missed that check. Just trying to keep it straight. Entering a night flight, and gotta turn the other way. Entering a dive, and I think this might be a record. Oh, pitch down, pitch down. It counts! That was a small explosion. Where'd everything else go? Huh. I guess it just all exploded at once. Seemed a little small though. Is there any debris around I could... Uh, nope. Okay, that was weird. I just shrugged my shoulders. You couldn't see that. And I'm back. This time I'm in a plane that doesn't make you go deaf, and I forgot to open the intakes, of which there are five. It's... even though it doesn't have crazy loud engines, it still has three of them, which, ironically, this is from a completely different time than the other one. God damn it. Is there an abort system on here? No, of course there isn't. Anyway, it's the Trio 1, and, well, yeah, it's an oddball, a WTF mobile, if you can please, but it flies well. well. What can I say? So, we've loaded back on in, and just re-enabling SAS and RCS, and doing the exact same thing as I did before. Great. This time I'm going to be smart enough to turn the engines off and hold the brakes. A 
apparently it's also a tail dragger. Got a good amount of lift for the amount of mass it has. I'll say that much. When I was building it, I really didn't expect it to work at all, let alone how well it does. And that is not the right arrow key. That's the down arrow key. I'm not sure if it can go supersonic or not. I mean, it definitely is the thrust, but I'm not sure about the aerodynamics. And that's a yes. It apparently does have the right stuff. So I'm actually going to pay attention to the line I'm taking here and try and set a record. Already a minute in, but that doesn't really say much because of the time it took to open up the intakes. All five of them. Do I have a pre-cooler on here? It's hard to tell with all this. What even is this stuff? I mean, I know it's air, but what is it? And why is this happening? Here's the pre-cooler. Yeah, this definitely had the stuff to go supersonic. What happens if I... Okay, nothing happens if I hit the abort key. Well, it flashes a bit, but that's my keyboard, not the game. Yeah, it's a V-tail accidental tail dragger with three engines that can go probably a kilometer a second if I tried. Also, these wings look really flimsy, so what's that first sharp corner going to do to it? Most plane wings look flimsy in real life, to be honest. I mean, I'm not scared of flying, but I'm scared of, well, the wings looking so flimsy. I mean, I know they're safe. I'm talking about real life now. But they just look so weird and unsafe, almost, like, Kerbal-ish, to be honest, when, like, when you first take off. When they first take off, you know what I mean. How they like pull back a little. It's like it's just pretty scary. I mean, nothing's gonna happen. Way more than likely, but still, it's just. I'm. Well, yeah. It's kind of scary. Once we're high up in the air, though, I'm pretty fine. I think you're actually the first people I've told this to, so yeah, don't tell anyone, internet. What's the inside of the plane look well, inside the cockpit look like? Pretty cool actually. Might grab a few screens. Let's fly with no HUD for a bit. The music I'm listening to while recording this goes so well with this. I might add it in, I'm not sure if it's copyrighted or not, but you know what, I'm probably going to add it in. It's, I think it's Rev It Up, I'm not sure. I'll have to check, you'll see it on the screen sooner or later-ish. And we definitely passed inside of that checkpoint. Might have time for one more plane, it's 1021, so... It'll be cutting it slightly close, but I could probably do it. I may be able to, no, I might make a playlist, so I don't have to change the music or rely on autoplay, but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like having control over my music. We're just gonna count that. And that's the second time in a row I've had to kamikaze dive to make the finish line. What the efficiency? Yeah, that's totally what it means. Yeah, it's a rather efficient plane. Let's open the intakes this time. Press the brakes. Quick save. And turn the engine on. This is a rather slow plane and it probably doesn't have the power, but screw it. I'm doing it anyway. Um, one wheel counts... At one rear wheel counts as a tail dragger, right? And wow, I need to use this ground as a runway. It might have actually been a better idea to use that runway over there, but whatever. 
This plane is a really low takeoff speed. Oh, and something about Displacer, the first plane I flew in here, it also was a really low takeoff and landing speed because of all the wings compared to its mass. It seems to be a general theme I'm going with nowadays. I'm just going to go ahead and quick save about here. So I don't have to go through this minute long takeoff process again. And we are finally across the starting line now. So yeah, I'm racing lines are going to be really important here if this thing is going to be at all competitive and it's not going to be. But yeah, I'm going to do my best, I guess. This is all very boring. It's maneuverable, though. I bet it would make a good glider. You know what? Maybe next video I make will be a glider course. I don't know. But I'm just going to go into the cockpit view, because this thing is so slow and boring that this is really the only way to make it exciting. Probably just sent a surge of disgusting green blood into Jeb's head. That's not something I want to be thinking about. But the sun looks pretty. Yeah, I'm as far as back as I can be. As far back as I can be. I am recording now, right? Oh, I can turn the volume back up. Again, can you see that bar in the upper left that just went away? I should probably take a couple of screenies here while I can. This plane isn't really going to be all that effective, so I might as well get some screenshots with it. What's going on with the lighting? Is that just my monitor, or what? It looks like someone put a slice of glass or something up there. It's gone now. Is there an altimeter in here? Um... Yeah, but I should be paying attention to this guy ahead of me. Not the altimeter. Because apparently instruments mean nothing in this game. Whoa, again, that was really close. Now is going to be the hard-ish part. The sudden steep climb. I mean, the plane is efficient, but that also means it's not particularly powerful in this case. There are the pieces of magical floating road. I'm not going to question it any more than I already am. I mean, really, they're just completely floating. And I need to go between these checkpoints. Yeah, it's already taken more than average lap time. Well, more than an average lap. And I'm not even halfway through it. At least it looks pretty. Oh, that's an that's an action group, not a function key. I'm literally sitting on my chair right now with my hands behind my back. This is taking ages. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and quick save here, open up my instrument panel, exit cockpit view, actually go back into cockpit view, and see what I can do with this bridge. I bet I can fly through that gap if I give it enough tries. I'm just going to go ahead and say montage now. Watch, I'm going to get it on 
the third try. Oh, wow, that was awesome. Wonder if I could do that in a splicer. Does it count as a montage if there's only one clip? Probably not. That looks pretty. Back to the actual vase, or I guess now it's a tour. Losing speed and what is that? Like a 25 degree climb? And what about the lines in the middle of the road? I mean, really? I said I'm not going to question it. Now I am. I mean, the ground here is just so level compared to the rest of Kerbin. Save for the KSC area, obviously. And the oceans, although those are actually some of the bumpiest areas. You just can't see it because the water is perfectly flat. Well, I mean, you can see it. It just doesn't exactly matter, and it's actually pretty hard to see. Like, that area off to the left is pretty damn bumpy compared to here. I mean, this is one of the few places where you could probably fly a hovercraft fast and not have to worry about it. The other places being the ocean, North Pole, South Pole, and... Hmm. I'm not actually sure. But, yeah, this is boring. And I'm running out of things to talk about. Are those signs solid? I wonder if we could do a wall ride on it with a rover. That would be pretty cool, actually. I doubt this thing can even go faster than 200 meters a second. Which, for Kerbal Plains, is damn slow. I mean, the sound barrier, it's never gonna get past, but at least get past 200 meters a second plane. There's gotta be some form of calculation you can do to figure this out, but I'm too lazy and too dumb to figure it out. What do these buttons do? Famous last words. Well, that one changes the speedometer. The other ones do nothing. I'm pretty sure with uh, whatever it is that one, uh, whoa. Okay, that one mod that adds in like the internal controls, I'll probably add it here in post-production, editing, whateverness. Did I miss a checkpoint? No, I made it. I think. I didn't notice if I missed it. Uh, hmm. Raster prop monitor, that's what it is. I'll leave a link in the description, by the way. Uh, that. The buttons actually do stuff, and there are buttons for RCS, uh, landing gear, etc. It's pretty cool and just adds, well, to more or less quote the page, puts the A in IVA. Inner, no, in vehicular, uh, intervehicular, in vehicle activity. There. It's, took me a while. Don't know why. In this tiny plane, that area ahead looks really, really intimidating. And it's 1033 right now. No idea why I had to point that out, but I did. Ain't no going back. Watch, this clip's gonna be half as long as I'm recording it. I should probably get rid of at least one more mod that I don't use. Probably extra planetary, uh, extra planetary launch pads. Just so I don't have to deal with the yellow timer and all the stuff associated with it. By the way, how was the frame rate in last week's episode? I feel like something was up with it, but I'm not sure. Maybe my eyes are just weird. Pull up, pull up. Don't want to have to go another 10 minutes with this. Which is definitely how long it's going to take. 
I mean, right now it's only uh, eight ish, well, approaching nine because of that minute I spent with the intakes and stuffs. But yeah, it's definitely going to take somewhere around 10 minutes. Not sure why I quick saved there, but I did. I'm still shocked I was able to make it through that little gap in the bridge on my first try. I mean, I swear to God, this is my first try with this plane, at least today. Any plane today. And in the past couple, well, actually, in about the past year. Oh, go ahead and free. Okay. Could this be a thumbnail? Eh, maybe. Yeah, this thing is pretty efficient. I haven't even burnt 50 liters of fuel. I haven't even burnt 40 liters of fuel, to be honest. Well, to be accurate. It's the exact opposite of a splicer. Okay, when I hit this, it'll count as finish, but... Okay, I'm not sure if those are holograms or not. I'm going to go back and check that out. But yeah, it took just about 10 minutes. Okay, that is solid. And wow, that did a lot more damage than I thought it would. How many times have I died in this episode anyway? I was convinced it would be a hologram. Guess I was wrong. But that's two stunts pulled off in this single run. Well, that's definitely all the time I've got for today. Both in the episode, which is hopefully about 30 minutes, and it's more or less bedtime now. See ya. Fire heard out.